Today marks the official peak of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season, and just as we had explained on Monday in terms of the no tropical activity expected over the next seven days, that has suddenly changed, and we've got another big up and coming that I want to talk to you about that's been on my radar for a little while now. Welcome back to the Weather Center. Happy Wednesday, hump day, everybody. If you haven't already noticed, I still sound like I was at a rock concert all day yesterday and many days prior to that. I'm not at 100%, but the show is going to go on, and there were some interesting up and comings both from National Hurricane Center and in some of our computer models for the rest of September that I want to talk to you all about. So we're going to make this intro short and sweet. If you are brand new to the channel, thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you could kindly consider hitting that subscribe button and joining the Weather Center community, it would be sincerely appreciated by all of us. Let's give that like button a little nudge smash that hype button if you were able to find it. I believe it's in the same toolbar somewhere in the same general area as you could find that like button. Share this information with folks you believe would benefit from it, as well as go ahead and drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts, not only on today being the calendar peak of the hurricane season, but some of the stuff we've been talking about that is now showing up in the models. So let's go ahead and rock in. Here we go. National Hurricane Center's no, National Hurricane Center's homepage. We have our new area of interest here, Eastern and Central Tropical Atlantic. If we once again are tracking a tropical wave that is forecast to come off the coast of Africa, and it has picked up some model support over the last 36 to 48 hours. You can see we've got the trademark 0 for 20 split, no chance of development over the next two days, up to a 20% shot over the next seven days. I do think after the 91L whiff by all of our computer models, Hurricane Center is going to be very, very steadfast on this one. They're going to be holding back. They're not going to be holding holding on to their butts, but they're going to be holding back, kind of refraining from upping these development chances as we go day by day, even though we have seen some pretty generous support by all of our global models. The GFS, the Euro, the AI model, of course, is actually showing development from this feature, unlike with 91L, so that could also help them to increase those formation chances a little faster than not. They've got a little more AI support behind them. The rest of the basin is quiet, but after today's model output, I'm very curious to see how much longer it's going to take before we see a fateful blip popping up down here. Stick with me towards the end of the video. I'll talk to you about why that is. Here's a look at our Goes East full satellite shot. Let me get my face out of the way. You can see we are starting to see a bit of that MJO influence coming across the basin, not only for the Atlantic, but especially the Eastern Pacific and the Western Caribbean. If you notice right in through here, we've seen a huge increase in our overall moisture and our thunderstorm activity. So there's definitely something doing a little something down there to help focus the lift down there. If you look over the Yucatan portions of Central America as well, and especially through the Pacific monsoonal trough, all the way up towards a dissipating tropical system, making its way up towards the Baja California Peninsula. I'm so sorry for my voice once again. Like I said, I'm still recovering, so bear with me, folks. We're starting to see the machinations, the presence of that vertical velocity lift provided by the Madden-Julian oscillation. We also have a stationary boundary and a surface low pressure pressure stuck up within that stationary boundary right over top central Florida that's been driving a heavy rain risk since yesterday. You can see a lot of thunderstorms really blossoming over south and eastern Florida, helping to finally bring down their drought conditions. They're the only portion of the Florida Peninsula left still experiencing some extreme drought conditions left over from the dry season back through March and into July, that extended period of the 2025 calendar year. The rest of the tropics still kind of battling that wave breaking dry air you can see it all in through here there's not a cloud pretty much in sight maybe some low cloud up near the azores islands but you can very well tell where a tut has extended down and dropped off another upper low signature right there a little counterclockwise spin over the central subtropical atlantic and the rest of the atlantic is quiet minus a tropical wave that's coming off right now that's not necessarily the one that national hurricane center is watching but we're gonna have to watch what that does as well once it begins to interact with what the MJO does in terms of our favorability department. 
Now, like I said, I'm still not fully recovered, so I'm not going to make this a very in-depth discussion. I do apologize, but I want to make sure that my vocals are good to rock, and I will be doing our nightside shows this weekend, so I need my voice to be as back in full swing as possible, especially since Mother Nature was actually kind enough to give us a break through the actual peak of the hurricane season and then start to kick up just in time for me to hopefully get this bug out of my system. I have the frame paused on the 22nd of September. I'll go back a couple days. We'll go back to the 19th. I want you to notice a couple different things here. We have a wave signature coming off of Africa there. We have the wave signature that is highlighted for our 0 for 20 right now. That is the tropical wave. Fast forwarded to about 10 days, give or take out. That is where it is forecasted to be. And this is when I do think it starts to find that opportunity to spin up into something a little more than just a healthy tropical wave. There's that leading wave, however. The Euro, the GFS, and the AI model have not fully fallen asleep on that leading wave that I pointed out on infrared right now coming off the coast of Africa. It actually has a little bit of a signal working through the Greater Antilles and the Turks and Caicos Islands. So we're going to keep a close eye on that as well, just in case. Not a whole lot of model support, and we're not quite into that favorable window for it to try to do a little something. But then as you fast forward beyond day 10, 11, and then 12... Look at the kind of emerging signal we have down here. The famous Bay of Campeche slash Western Caribbean hotspot. More of our models, both operational and ensembles, are starting to pick up on this. If you switch over to your velocity anomalies, this is our short range. This is our 15-day Euro mean ensemble output here, which is basically a clumping together of all the 51 individual members showing you the most likely outcome, what the models tend to agree on. And you could see right after the fateful September 11th, which by the way, if you're up to speed on current events, which I'm sure you are today, we had a disgusting animosity take place at a Utah college, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not going to put it out there because this isn't a political channel. This is a weather channel, but I don't wish that type of business on anybody, regardless of your views, your opinions. We're all entitled to opinions. Nothing can shake what happened today, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Right after September 11th, another infamous day in American history and world history, I'll say, we are going to see the tables turn and we're going to have some favorable forcing over the Caribbean and the Atlantic Basin running from about the 13th, we'll say, give or take, all the way towards the backside of September. And I think our models in traditional fashion are finally starting to catch up on that. If you look at our GFS ensembles, you can see as we fast forward into the early portions of next week, a healthy signal, not only for that tropical wave, that national hurricane, Hurricane Center is tagged, but we also have some early ensemble members picking up on that famous gyre, possibly lifting into the eastern gulf, and that's where I'm going to stop it because there is a huge fork in the road, and we know this. We've done the gyre game before. We've played the gyre game several times before. It is a tricky mess to resolve. Ensembles are going to fly back and forth from this general area. We saw it with Idalia, Ididdly Duda, Idalia back in 2023. We saw it with Helene last year. We saw it more so with Milton. Milton's signal started back here, worked its way into the Western Caribbean, and then all of a sudden we actually saw the real thing manifest itself in the Bay of Campeche. So ensembles and computer models are going to go back and forth. I will tell you this. Through pattern recognition and through seeing this thing from historical context time and time again, I'm talking way back to even 2018 with Hurricane Michael. If we see something, try to organize in the Western Caribbean off the coast of Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize, the Yucatan, the chances of seeing something in the state of Florida up through Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi goes up dramatically. If something were to develop like Francine did last year in the Bay of Campeche, I know that obviously Milton was a totally different beast a month later, different steering mechanisms, then we also have to be a little more on guard for the likes of Texas. Texas and Louisiana. That's as far out of a projection I'm going to give you. We've seen it time and time again, and we're starting to see that signal growing just as we had expected. We've had the conversations, we've had the live discussions, and we've been talking together as a collective community that usually when the gyre signal starts to percolate, we saw it initially starting right about now, between the 10th and the 13th of September. I had mentioned, we'll usually see it lag a little bit. It'll probably be another five, seven, maybe even 10 days before models truly lag on to that real signal and we're starting to see it. 
Here's a look at your Canadian ensembles. As you fast forward beyond September 11th, you start to see a bit of a signal for that wave coming off the coast of Africa. And then by about the 15th into the 17th, if you look down your Central America, you start to see a lot of the lowering pressures, not only indicating we're starting to move into that favorable phase for some Atlantic activity, but then there you have it. You start to see some closed low pressure members lifting up out of the Caribbean one does make a beeline for Texas, but I'm telling you, just through pattern recognition, notice where a large majority of those ensembles end up. We don't know. It's too far out. I am not projecting a landfall for anybody. We still have to get a system off the ground. I want to emphasize that. I also want to show you this. The GFS has been progging the system down there. This model run shows some slop headed up towards central Florida, which is still a potential outcome. If something from the Central American gyre does try to develop and we miss the interaction between the trough that's been dug in over the eastern United States and we kind of fall lopsided to all that low pressure, that rising motion over Central America and get caught like Aaron did on the wrong side of the large clockwise spin that forms in the upper levels, then we end up with a sheared mess. We may not even get anything off the ground. It might just be a rainmaker like the precursor event to Milton last year. The one thing I do want to show you, though, is the interesting upper level flow with this. So if you notice early on in the run before we see development, this is almost precisely what we saw pre-Helene. We had a trough slash CAG interaction. I should probably just say gyre. My voice is not adequate enough to say CAG right now. But we have an upper trough, a positively tilted trough that's been providing us with an early dose of fall from most of the eastern United States down into the southeast this upcoming weekend. This could help to instigate a bit of nourishment for our gyre. That's why once you start to move forward in time to about the 17th, that's been a pivotal date and time I've mentioned on the channel we start to see that trough begin to break down and we get an upper level anti-cyclone start to develop. That's the interaction we typically look for to spark tropical development down in the low and mid levels. This is highest up in the atmosphere. This is 200 millibars, 20, 30,000 feet in the air. What happens up here does trickle down to the surface and we typically look for that trough and anti-cyclone interaction, whether it be north, northwest of where that anti-cyclone begins to form, usually this is a favorable exhaust mechanism to get some low pressure going. And if you switch over to the Canadian model, the Canadian model is finally on board as well. The Euro still has some ensembles down there, but through years of past, I've noticed the Euro tends to lag big time with its depiction of the gyre. And to tell you the truth, I can't really speak on whether or not we've seen a lot of AI-derived gyre solutions as well. So it'll be interesting to see when the deterministic models will pick up on that as well. So that's what I'm watching. We've got a couple different signals, and I think we're only slowly but surely starting to peel back the lid on what this peak of the hurricane season is expected to show us. Am I thinking it's going to be knock our socks off type of back-to-back -back activity? We don't know yet. Based on what the long-range picture looks like from a week-by-week -week perspective and what our 46-day ensemble show from the Euro, the extended GFS, the climate forecast system, all of our longer-range computer models that give us a general look, it doesn't quite look as favorable as we did last year, but to be determined, we've got a lot of hot water still focused in through the Gulf, the Caribbean, and the tropics of the Atlantic, and we're developing that La Nina characteristic in the Pacific. So thermodynamically, when we're talking strictly temperatures, we're there. Now it's just a wait and see game. Give it a little more time like we've been saying, and we're starting to see the pieces begin to move. So thank you so much for tuning in today, folks. I do again apologize if you've stuck around to the end of the video, if you could put up with my weird voice. I promise we're making progress. We are making progress, and as soon as I hop off camera, I'm going to go gargle some warm salt water, take some more medicine to hopefully not lose my voice like I did on Monday after shooting my video. But I hope you've had an awesome start to your week. First half of the week, it is hump day. We're halfway to the finish line. Have a great rest of your day stay safe out there with everything that is going on and we will definitely see you next time but until then this is weather center nazario signing out